This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of uh, MEDEM 2014, an interview with uh, Thurston Sliche, a VP of uh, Marketing and Communication in Europe for Napster. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi Thurston, and great to have you on the show. How's it going? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm fine. Show is doing good, so um, it's always interesting to be at Meta, meet a lot of people, and um, catch up, see new trends. So everything good. Excellent. So uh, let's talk about Napster. Uh, of course, uh, you know I'm very familiar with it, being from the UK. It's a service that's been around for a long time there, uh, and. Uh, uh, Napster has had quite an interesting year uh, in the sense that uh, back in October you announced a partnership with uh, Telefonica, so things are changing fast and there's a lot of new things happening at the company. So, uh, you know, from October onwards, what is happening with the Telefonica deal? How is that changing how you're uh, pushing yourself out in Europe? Okay, um, so I, I think first of all, Telefonica was really the end of a series of deals, not the right. beginning. So we, we have done a big partnership with E Plus in Germany in April which um, we officially announced in October that within seven months we acquired more than 200,000 customers just in Germany via this partnership. We did partnerships with Vodafone in the Netherlands, Spain and Greece. We have a partnership with SFR in France. Yeah. And then, then last but not least, we um, did the O2 or the Telefonica partnership, which for Europe basically came down to launching with O2 in Germany. Um, all the other activities around the Telefonica deal for now are basically focused on the Latin American countries. Yeah. Um, but, but obviously we, we are exploring more opportunities for, for European territories as well. Sure, of course. And so uh, well, where do you see the Napster brand today? Of course, it's a very recognizable brand. Uh, and across Europe, uh, do you see people that uh, you know, are familiar with it as a, a service? Do they still associate it with the old image? How, how, do, you, how do you deal with the baggage? Um, so I, I, I think you hit the nail quite on the spot. Um, so, so basically brand, the Napster brand has a very high brand awareness. People do understand that it stands for music. Um, in the countries we have launched in, in the last year, obviously a lot of people do not 100% understand the offer. And, and the product which is, which is associated with the brand. So, so definitely we have to do some kind of more investment into product understanding. Um, so really transfer the brand awareness into product understanding, I think is the task we definitely have. Yeah. I'm particularly interested in the German market. The German market is interesting because uh, uh, there's a lot of streaming services there, but uh, it's still a market that is 75% physical, essentially. So uh, how do you see uh, that market transitioning over to digital? Do you think that we're going to see a transition direct from physical sales to streams, bypassing downloads? Uh, basically, I'm German, so I'm allowed to say that Germans in general are very skeptical about new things, and, and they are not big fans of subscription in general. So I, th I think, first of all, you, there had to be a cultural shift, and, and we definitely see that this, especially with the, the younger generation, that there's definitely a shift that people are not so skeptical anymore, that they are more open to new business models. Um, and as said, uh, we, we have been able to acquire around 200,000 subscribers just in seven months with the E-plus partnership. So awesome. de de definitely we see, we see a shift. And um, I, I, I tend to agree that, that probably the relevance for downloads in Germany has never been as big as in the UK or the US. And, and probably, I, would, I wouldn't say bypassing them, because still there are people which are using them. But percentage-wise, I think um, the higher portion of dig digital revenues in the future will come from streaming and not from subscription in Germany. Yeah, sure. uh, looking at Napster's platforms, so uh, what do you see, you know, how you're organized right now as far as uh, a mobile presence, for example? Are you cross-platform uh, fully? And, and uh, how are you maintaining that, that product line? Um, so, so mobile definitely is our focus. So we, we see that there's a huge shift in usage and um, user bases from PC to mobile. So in certain markets, we have already 80 to 90 percent mobile users instead of PC. Um, PC still remains an important tool for people if they have a huge library, if they want to manage the playlist. I think everything is more convenient on the PC. But then if you are on the go, a lot of people have dogging station for their mobile phones. So the, I would say the, the PC is the place to manage your archive, but your mobile phone or your tablet is the place to enjoy your music. So, so therefore, there, there's a huge focus on mobile. We, we have right now, I, I would say, very good apps for Android and for iOS.
We have just launched the first version of our Windows Mobile client um, last week. And we are going to do a second release within the next four to five weeks to enable more functionality within this. Um, and, and then I think we have supported all the important apps. And in parallel, we work together with car manufacturers. We just have announced a partnership with BMW, where we basically built in the connectivity and the music service into the head unit. Yeah. So you don't need your smartphone anymore. Connectivity oh, yeah. and the music service is really built into the head unit of the car, which is, I think, a very impressive implementation. That's interesting, actually, because I, I remember I had a, a demo from BMW in one of their cars. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, last um, last year, last May, yeah. and they were still concentrating on uh, apps that were supported from the smartphone into the car. So now they're starting to integrate uh, apps directly. Yeah, so they they basically said we are going to do two things. We we have customers which have their smartphones, which who have their apps there. So they are totally happy if they can connect it done. But with regards to user experience, if you if you drive a seven BMW or this kind of big luxury cars. They would like to deliver a more convenient user experience. And that's where they decided to really implement everything into the head unit yeah. so that the phone is not needed. You have a complete user interface on your head unit. You can put even playlists to, to station buttons. So you have direct access to your music via the station buttons. Um, and, and therefore, it is obviously more convenient and, more, and, and, and definitely safer. Because if you think you are in the car, you're driving. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't look too long on the screen to find a new song or to, to find your playlist. So by, by having this implementation directly to the head unit, um, we, we definitely increase the, the safety for, for driving. Yeah, sure. And looking at uh, other markets in Europe, uh, uh, you know, is there a particular market that is exciting you in terms of uh, possibilities and potential? Um, so, so definitely we are very, very satisfied with our um, performance in France in, in the partnership with, with um, SFR. Um, so this is this is definitely a market we have in focus. We we are very surprised about, or I, I wouldn't say very surprised, but very pleased by the success in certain Scandinavian countries, because we we always have seen Scandinavia as a very difficult market. Because as you know, Spotify is there, Wimp is there, all of them have very settled partnerships with mobile operators. But but definitely we have seen that there's a demand for another service. So people don't want to be with the monopolist. Um, so I think that's that's the positive things. Markets which are very interested is especially if you go to southern or or eastern Europe like Greece, Spain. So market with high piracy with some economical issues. I think it's very interesting to see the markets, see the user behavior in the markets, and figure out a way to make this market work. Yeah. So so definitely this is this is a great challenge. And we're talking about price points as well, because of course you know if you're talking about Greece, uh, 120 euros a year for the majority of people, it's it's a hell of a lot of money. Right, and it's. I think it's up to us to work very close with the music industry. So, for for example, in for Greece, we have a, we we have achieved a release in a relief in the price point. So we are able to offer the service there at least for a test period at six ninety five. Um, to, to Portugal the same. Um, so so really to see if by managing the price point, managing the messaging, the way you market it to the consumer, if you can achieve more in this kind of markets or not. So really use them as test scenarios for other things. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And uh, so uh, looking at uh, how you're planning to uh, expand into South America as well, I, I know that you're, you're focused on Europe, but as far as the Telefonica deal, you know, what does that mean for you guys uh, for an expansion in South America? And, uh, and is this something that is uh, an important part of the roadmap for the company? It is a 100% important roadmap for the company. And um, in working together with Telefonica, the first and most important thing is we have taken over their Sonora customer base and migrated them on the Napster platform. So the, the therefore, out of, really with the start, we have a huge amount of customers already in, in South and Latin America. And now we, we have partnerships with um, Vivo in Brazil. We are working with all the, the lo with their local opcos to, 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 to get the partnerships done. Colombia, Peru, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Colombia. So I, I think there's a huge potential. And um, I think this combination of having the heritage brand and the mobile carrier, the strong mobile carrier presence of Telefonica in this country is, will, will definitely help us to create this kind of product, product understanding and re revitalize this um, iconic brand into a new service for, for, for Latin America users. And I think that's, that's a very great opportunity for us. Yeah. Uh, looking at uh, how uh, streaming services are trying to differentiate themselves from one another, you know, of course, uh, catalogs are 
relatively similar, especially when it comes to you know the big major uh, league artists. Uh, and so really the the differentiation comes uh, with the branding and with the functionality of the application. So uh, in terms of, uh, for example, discovery or other functionalities that you may have added to the app to make, uh, to make it stand out from, from, from the crowd, uh, what do you think are the most important features for, for, of Napster today? Yeah, so, so first of all, I fully agree that catalog is nothing to differentiate. I, I would go one step further and would say within the next 12 months, features would become commodity as well. Because basically, it's a, it's a development cycle. You cannot invent everything new every 12 months. So the feature will become commodity. Um, but I think the way you allow consumer to explore and find new music and to manage their personal archives is, um, is the key. So, so therefore, I, it's not so much the feature set itself. I think it's the way how, how you create the user experience, how you sort these features, how you weight the features, how do you weight creation against algorithms, um, how you allow people to share playlists, how you allow people either to use friends' recommendation to explore new music. So I think this kind of combina combining the features and create one user experience where people really can find the music they love, I think that's the key and that's, that will become the main differentiator. Absolutely. And do you think, um, um, talking about Germany again, uh, that the lack of uh, YouTube on the marketplace is having an impact on the way that people consume music right now? Because, of course, that makes their consumption habits very different from uh, those in the rest of Europe, where a lot of people use YouTube as one of the main sources. Um, I, I, there's not a lack of YouTube. YouTube is in Germany and a lot of people using it, especially the younger, younger generation. So my son is 13. So I do have a quite good understanding <laughs> what young people are doing. And, and YouTube is, for, for a lot of them, the source to listen to music. Not all the music has been available on YouTube, but, but finally there had been an agreement between YouTube and Gamer, so I expect that the, the music will show up. I, I, I would not say that it is massive differently from, from all the other countries, be, besides one fact that for, for quite a while there had been some major catalog not been available on YouTube, but nevertheless, people has used YouTube to listen to music, especially on the young generation, they have this kind of MP3 software around. If they listen to a video on YouTube, they, they will receive an MP3 afterwards. So this kind of gray mark, piracy, however you would like to call it, it is there as well, full stop. And uh, moving on to the UK, of course, I started by saying that uh, Napster is a very well-known service in the UK because uh, you know, it launched uh, quite a few years ago. I remember I was at university, I think. So, uh, 2004. Yeah. Uh, I was I was just finishing university when I, I was subscribing to Napster uh, back then, uh, and so you know it's got a long history in the country. Uh, how have you seen that you know the user base progress and maybe people that have stuck around since then? Um, actually, I think what we can say and what is very important about us for our success is that we have a very loyal user base. Yeah. So once we have a customer in the service, they stay very long with us. For, for a lot of reasons. I think one of the reasons is very early we have already understood that people don't want to listen to music just on their PC. So we have done very, very early implementations with companies like Sonos to support home entertainment, to give people access to the music via different channels. Um, I, we are one of the very few services which really ha has an editorial team, which is writing articles, trying to help people to find new music. And I think especially in, the, in our long-term customer base, we, had a, we have a lot of appreciation around this additional services, around being just a music archive. I think people see us definitely more as a music service and the source of music information than, than just a music archive where they manage playlists. And I think that's, that's one of the things why, why we have been able to be around so long. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, there's so much value placed on playlists today. And given uh, you know that you have a service that was around since 2004, you must have a hell of a lot of playlists on the service as well. We 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 definitely have. So there, there's a huge amount of editorial playlists done by our our curation team, and then in parallel, obviously, we have a lot of customers um, having 100, 120, 150 different playlists for different occasions, different genre, different moods. And, and definitely that, that's a value and that's nothing you, you, you give away by changing the music service. So definitely. So for the next 12 months, uh, you know, what are your main areas of focus uh, uh, for, for, for the next year? So as I said, 2013 has been a very exciting year for us in doing all these operator partnerships. I, 
I, I think we will not do the same amount of partnerships in 2014, but definitely will work with our existing partners to make this partnership successful, to, to, make, it, to make sure that all our partners are pleased with, with the performance of the service and, and the growth of the subscriber base. But then in parallel, obviously, by launching 15 European countries last year, this year we would really like to put our focus back on direct-to-consumer growth and, and make these countries work and grow for us. And as you said before, this kind of transferring the brand awareness into product understanding and then, of course, into subscribers is definitely one of the focus for this year. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time. And uh, again, uh, go and check out Napster. If you haven't checked out the service in a while, it's definitely worth uh, having a look at the site and uh, uh, seeing what they're up to uh, from a product point of view. Thanks so much. Perfect. Thank you very much for the time and enjoy the rest of the medium. That's great. Thank you. And this has been the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or uh, youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends. <laughs>